Hi guys, my name's Aaron. This is a tune shader that I made in UDK. A few people have asked how um, how the shader actually works. So what I figured I'd do is I'd uh, build it up um, from the start and show you kind of how each bit works and how I put it all together. So this is the shotgun shell for it. Um, this is what I'm going to be using for my base. So I'm going to start just by showing you the texture that I used. Um, so the texture is really simple. I mean, it's just a flat color um, with the with a few black marks for the scratches and then black for the outline of the basic object. Um, I've left the compression settings as default. Nothing different there. And I've also got a flat black material, which is just a, a zero plugged into the emissive and set to unlit, uh, which you can see here. Um, and the actual mesh itself is broken up into two different materials. So there's the black outline, which I got by duplicating the mesh um, and expanding it and then flipping the geometry and then putting the flat black material on the outline to give me that kind of dark sober edge. Uh, so I'm going to start from scratch so you guys can see it kind of building from the ground up. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just swap my lighting model over to custom and you can see that this kind of um, brings up the custom lighting setup there we go okay um, so yeah I'm going to be doing most of, pretty much all of my work out of this um, occasionally I've used the opacity mask as well um, but for this I'm just going to be using custom lighting so the first thing I'm going to do is because I'm starting with a just a a black background you can't actually see anything um, so what I need to do first is I need to get my lighting information and to do this I need to get a light vector so I'm going to open up my material expressions and just type in light vector um, or light and just drag and drop that in so if I just plug this straight into my custom lighting you can see this weird kind of blue multicolored different effect um, and this is just like the actual uh, lighting, you can see that it changes as I kind of pan through all this. Um, so what I want to do is I want to turn this, make this grayscale basically and give it actual lighting information. So to do that, I'm going to dot product to that. Um, and dot product is basically uh, multiplying each vector together to give me one, one value. Uh, so I'm going to drag out my dot product and what I want to do is I want to multiply this by my normal map uh, now because I don't have a normal map on this I'm just going to use a constant 3 vector by 3 and clicking um, and I'm just going to drag and drop that into my B slot and I'm going to set my B input to 1 just to give me flat normal so I plug that in you can see now that I've got this very basic lighting setup and if I move around the light by holding down L and clicking um, in my material preview I can kind of see that I've got some very basic material setup now. Um, so now I want to start building this up and the kind of premise from a tune shader um, or cell shading is that the lighting is, is banded instead of being a kind of a gradient fall off. It's split up into several different bands. So first thing I want to create a constant one vector which I get by one and clicking uh, and this is going to be my uh, number of bands so I'm just going to set this to default uh, for two at the moment um, so I get two band numbers and I want to multiply this by my dot product And plug those in together. Now what I want to do is I want to do um, use a thing called a seal um, which is short for sealing and, and what this does is it just rounds things up to the nearest number uh, to the nearest whole number 
so if you just imagine it's like bringing the numbers up to the ceiling kind of thing um, so what I'm basically saying is I'm taking my light vector information by my normal map to give me this gray scale and I'm multiplying this by 2 so this product gives me a value of 0 and 1 which I'm now multiplying up to 2 um, which I'm then sealing so it basically says uh, if you do the if you did the maths on it anything that's black um, being 0 would be multiplied by 2 which would stay at 0 so that would get rounded up to 1 and then anything over that gets multiplied up and over to 1 would then become 2 um, so it gives me a flat fall off and uh, what I can do if I wanted to is actually take the UVs from a, a gradient texture sample to get a little bit more control over this but for now I just want to get kind of like a nice even banding so I'm just going to leave it as it is for now so if I um, plug this into my custom lighting uh, you should see that I've got the the banding already so you can kind of see there I've got my constant white I've got the, my gray and then I've got this black kind of at the at the end here so what I want to do is because I don't want this to be um, emissive which it is because it's past the number value of one um, I want to uh, divide this back down and I do that by pressing D and clicking uh, and I'm going to plug my A value into the seal and then my number of bands into the divide so if you imagine this is kind of multiplying the number up and then it's rounding it all off and then it's dividing it back down by the same number to give me um, a constant between 0 and 1 so I can change this now to however many I like and if I knock it to 4 you can see now that the number of bands gets increased um, I can move this around however I want using the light it, move lighting function. Um, but you can see here that I've got kind of like this uh, gradient where it gets slightly lighter on the back. Uh, and to fix this, we want to be using a uh, what's called a constant clamp, uh, which basically lets you um, force any number to go between two values. So I have a high and a low which you can see here are my properties for my clamp I'm just going to plug that into my divide and my custom lighting okay and you can see now that that's got rid of that extra band information so I'm just going to bring this back down to two okay so now we've got our basic lighting setup we can start adding in our diffuse texture so to do that we um, we go into our material properties find our texture and I'm just going to drag and drop this in by T in clicking okay so to get my texture information on top of this I'm just going to multiply them together so I get a multiply again by pressing M and clicking I'm going to plug that into my custom lighting so now I've got a very simple tune shader um, but I can see here that where it knocks it off to, to black um, that can cause some weird looking issues uh, if you're not careful so what I usually do is change my constant clamp value to instead of just the minimum of 0 I change it to a minimum of 0.1 or 0.2 um, and it just gives you that kind of extra level of control um, so I'm just going to set that to 0.5 so it's the same value as my uh, my band value so I kind of just get that that one or the other fall off um, so now I've got the basic thing but I want to kind of add in my specular because in my concept you can kind of see that it's got this dark edge and then it's got this really nice bright kind of edge detection on there so I want to create this so um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to unhook what I've done now and leave this to one side so I can just work on my specular so to get my specular I want to do something very similar I want to get another light vector um, and I also want to get a reflection vector and I want to dot product those together again and if I plug this in you can see what it's created so you can see here I've got um, 
the essence of a specular. Obviously, it has been refined with um, a specular power or um, or kind of the control of the specular. Um, so what we want to do now is we want to sharpen this up so it's a really fine point. And to do that, I'm just going to uh, firstly constant clamp it down so I can get rid of this banding at the back. So I'm just going to copy and paste the constant clamp that I have at the moment and leave this at a default value of um, 0 and 1 because I still want my full range. And if we plug this into our custom lighting, I can see now that on the back it's just fixed those problems. So now I want to go about sharpening this image so I've got a much stronger representation um, like it is in my concept. Um, so to do this, I want to be using a mixture of power of and multiply. Um, so to get a power of, I'm just going to search. In fact, I'm just going to use it in the drop down box by right clicking, go to math, and then power. And I'm going to do this a few times. Uh, to be honest, I haven't really played with it that much. Um, there's probably a much better way of doing this. But for what I need at the moment, I'm just going to leave it as is. So I've got two power ofs and a multiply. So I'm just going to hook those up. And the multiply goes into the base of one and then the output of the other. The constant clamp goes into the base of one and then the other. Um, so I'm going to just set this value to 10. And I'm going to plug this into the exponents of both of the power outputs. And we'll hook each one up in turn so you can kind of see what, what each one's doing. Uh, so if I put in my basic custom lighting, you can see now that it's really kind of sharpened it. Um, oh, sorry, it hasn't really sharpened it, but it's kind of it's um, adjusted the fall off so it's much smaller, um, which is something that I want because I don't want the specular to be too big, um, which that is at the moment, so definitely won't be knocking that down which this does um, so then I want to multiply this so if I just plug in the multiply I need to plug in a constant one vector though to make sure that's working so this is taking my power of and basically um, making it smaller then my multiply is then um, bring this up so if I put in just a small value to start with um, you can kind of see how strong this is getting. So you can see the fall off of the edge is actually getting um, smaller. So I'm going to whack this up to something really big like 200 um, and then I'm going to finally add in my final power of and just see what that's done. So you can see now it's created a really sharp kind of edge around there. Um, so what I want to finally do is again I want to constant clamp this down again Just because I don't want any emissive, I want to be plugging this into an alpha, so uh, I want to keep this between a value of 0 and 1. So that's given me my kind of my base specular. Uh, so now I want to create my kind of specular colour. Now what I could do is just um, is just like kind of add this on top, uh, but I found it doesn't give me as nice a kind of image as I want. Uh, so what I found worked quite nicely was by using a linear interpolate or a LERP and basically going between my normal texture and lighting mode um, to the same model but with a um, I don't need that sorry um, but added a 0.05 value to it so if I just plug this in here and create a constant one vector and plug that in and set that to a value of um, let's say Let's just set that to 1 for now, just so you can kind of see the transition. Um, and I want to plug this, which is my specular, into my LERP. And finally plug my LERP into the custom lighting output. Um, so you can see now that I've created a really strong kind of specular output, and we can actually control that now with this input um, by kind of just knocking down the value until we get something that we're happy with. So I want quite a, quite a faint value, so I'm going to just leave this at 0.05. And I think that gives me kind of quite a nice kind of output. Um, so that's the basic breakdown of the actual 
uh, cell shader. Um, so if you have any more questions, feel free to comment on the YouTube video or you can comment on my polycount thread. Um, and thank you for watching.